Hi, and welcome along to the North Lodge Cottage Garden. A really reliable, tough, strong and sturdy rose that I'd like to talk to you about today, and not one that is very easy to pronounce. This beautiful creature is Susan Williams Ellis. This particular rose is the pure white scion of the Mayflower Rose, very, very closely related to the old roses. This is an absolute stunner and don't let its beauty fool you. This particular rose is really, really tough and very, very hardy. So if you are one of those gardeners that ventures out into the garden uh, at the April bank holidays around Easter, uh, rolls out your towel, plumps yourself in the garden and then goes back inside by the time the August bank holiday comes along. This may be a rose for you. Fantastic for a low hedge uh, or growing in a pot. This is a really, really tough little rose that will take all sorts of weather conditions and flower really, really reliably. Very closely related to Harlow Carr and to the country parson, the fragrance on this particular rose is absolutely outstanding. And that's because it is so closely related to the old roses. It reliably reaches just over three feet and produces a really lovely dome shaped plant. Very, very attractive foliage, which is very deeply serrated. I'm gonna take out one of these for you now. I'm gonna handle it with caution because something I do need to note with you, that it is incredibly spiky. I'm gonna take this one out here. This is a, a, a side leader, you can see. Look at the barbs on her, very, very spiky. Hundreds and hundreds of tiny little barbs. They're incredibly sharp. So you do need to handle this particular rose with care. I have debarbed this one for today's video. That means I've run my secateurs along the stems as I would do if I was arranging this in a floral display, just so it's actually safe to hand handle. But this particular rose, as you can see, I don't know if that's picking that up, is very, very spiky indeed. Right, let's pop that one back in there. And we were talking about foliage. Very, very deeply serrated around the outside, which is showing a nod towards its heritage with the old roses and the dog roses. The foliage is tinged with a very, very distinctive red edge around the very, very outside of the leaf. And the foliage itself in the center, a very, very dark emerald green, picking up a sort of grey, blue, green slate colour. The entire bush together with the white flowers above and that grey, green foliage together is really very, very pleasant indeed. During the winter, this particular rose is a funny looking lady. Scraggy, woody, twiggy, most unattractive. It's really difficult to know how to prune it. It doesn't really uh, look like a, another rose like you'd be pruning, for instance, the Princess Alexandra of Kent or the Lady Emma Hamilton with big, strong, thick canes and you can choose and work your way around it. I have now developed a technique with this particular rose is to leave it well alone until right to the end of March. By then, you will have known what canes have survived the winter and what canes haven't. Very, very much like Rosa rugosa, which is the rose hip, this particular plant will shed canes for no reason during the winter. The whole stems will simply die back. They'll go a really, really funny colour. And it's very apparent to the eye that they've died. And come late March, you can simply prune those out and let it go again. If it does need any other pruning, the easiest thing to do with it is just take a pair of shears to it and give it a light, sh a light clipping. Uh, just to form it up. But this particular rose does actually form a beautiful dome-shaped plant, no more than about three and a half feet across and no more than three and a half feet tall. I say that lovely foliage, a grey green slate tinge to that with these pure white flowers, which open, as you can see from this one here, virtually completely flat with those outer petals ever so slightly folding back towards the actual stem. In the very, very centre, a very, very small cluster of yellow stamens. And because I say this is a scion, a spur of the Mayflower, there is a very, very small tinge of pink to the blooms. Again, not so much on that one there, but you can see a very, very distinctive little tinge of pink right in the centre. This is a really, really lovely rose if you're bold enough to cut it and bring it into the house. All the romance and beauty that you would expect of a highly fragrant old English rose. The fragrance is 
faced it's it's simply beautiful and this I'm assuming, I don't know, but this is I'm assuming, is where the fragrance from Harlow Carr and uh, the Country Parson is coming from. They're very strongly related to this particular rose. But a really, really great rose for growing in a pot, growing as a small hedge or a boundary if you wanted to keep, for instance, pets off of a lawn or an informal hedge between yourself and your neighbour. This particular rose will do really well for that. And because it's very small and compact, fantastic for growing in a pot. The other thing to note about this particular rose is its unbelievable resistance to disease, which is very, very strange considering its heritage. Most of the old roses and the old English roses suffer terribly with black spot and mildew. Not this particular lady. She flowers all the way through the summer, very, very early to start in the garden, right here in the beginning of June, flowering on and off all the way through to the first frosts in September and October. So a really good and very, very hard working rose, which will tolerate lots of different soil conditions and lots of different weather conditions. As I say, much like things like Scarborough Fair, which is famed for being as tough as old boots, this particular rose will stand up to all sorts of things. So if you're not a particularly attentive gardener, this might be a rose for you to seek out. A really, really good all round rose. And if fragrance is important to you or you're limited for space uh, because it's uh you know uh, on the small side this is a rose that you really should seek out now i'm not overly keen as a general rule on pure white roses but this one is utterly stunning and for me it's disease resistance it's size being compact it's sheer hardiness and toughness to be able to stand up to most garden conditions paired with that amazing fragrance It's very, very floral, and I know that's silly because it's a flower, but it's very, very floral and in the, uh, in the upper notes. There's notes of citrus there, sandalwood at the back. It really, really is fresh, it's clean, it's very, very heavy. And this plant here, only producing you know three or four blooms so far this season, but very, very pretty. Uh, and I really would not would recommend this one very highly. So if you haven't got this one in your collection already, something that I would add, especially if you're going to grow it in a pot.